Hello everyone, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rahul and I'll be teaching you this particular module which is control and instrumentation. Now, the first topic or the first lesson that we have to learn is introduction to control system or introduction to controllers. Right. So basically, what is a controller or what is a control system? So a control system, it consists of subsystem and process or plants which are assembled together to control the output of a process. Right. So in a control system, you may have several subsystems and along with that you can have a plan or uh, these subsystems together they can uh, produce some output or process some output. Now, for example human body is a very good example of control system right so you have so many subsystems within you for example you, you have your heart which pumps the blood, you have the kidney and the liver, which removes the toxin, right? You have your arms, legs, eyes, nose, and so many other subsystems, right? Which drives a plant, so which drives your human body, or which is necessary for normal operation of a human body, right? Or you can, using these subsystems, you can perform a certain process, something like walking, talking, or maybe lifting a cup of tea, right? So that's a very good example of your control system. Now, the control system, they are assembled for the process of obtaining a desired output for a given set of input. What do I mean by that? So basically what I mean is generally for designing a control system, uh, you're, you will be aware or uh, you, your output and your input will be known or at least your desired output will be known along with your input. Right? So both your input and your output or the desired output will be known. And we design a control system to uh, automate this process. So based on the input we are applying, this control system will produce the desired output. And now you have so many examples of control systems around you. Basically, nowadays everything is automated. Right. So some of the examples of a control system you have your computer printer, digital cameras, uh, high-speed train, and even drones. Now, this is a typical uh, example of a control system. Uh, so once we have designed the control system, how would we know whether our control system is good or it is not so good, right? So we need some uh, performance parameter which we will analyze to decide whether our control system is working fine or it is good or not, right? So here in this, uh, slide I have taken an uh, example of elevator right so the performance of an elevator it depends on transient response and steady state error now let's try and understand this example so let's say you are on floor number one and you want to go up to the floor number four so what you will go, what you will do, you will go inside the lift or inside the elevator and press four. So what will happen? 
your lift will slowly and gradually it will start rising all the way up to fourth floor right and then it will stabilize there may be a little bit of error in the alignment right so maybe your lift is not perfectly aligned with the fourth floor but there may be a little bit of error okay now so this portion this portion in which your lift or your elevator is rising up to the fourth floor that's your transient response and obviously you will have some error over here so that is your steady state error now to talk a little bit more uh, about this example let's take two cases right so let's say if the transient response is too fast let me use a pen so let's say if my transient response is too fast that means your lift is rising too fast means something like this right so your lift is rising very quickly to the fourth floor so in that case the passenger inside the lift or inside the elevator they will get uncomfortable right now similarly on the reverse side if your transient response is too slow right that means lift is taking a lot of time to rise to the fourth floor it takes a very long time very slowly it is rising to the fourth floor passengers will be comfortable but they will get impatient it's taking a very long time to go to fourth floor so either cases they are not very suitable for our controller right that means the transient response of the controller which we are designing it should neither be too fast nor it should be too slow it should be somewhere in the middle reasonable enough now let's talk about steady state error same thing if it is too large or if it is too small so if the steady state error this difference between your uh, desired output and actual output Right. If it is too small, that means almost negligible error. It is very good. Our control system is uh, is is working good. Right. So if it is too small, we don't have any problem. Whatever we desired, we are getting the similar output or very close to that output. But if the steady state error is too large. So in this example, let's say this is the fourth floor. Okay, so too large means maybe the lift has is above the fourth floor, or lift is, or your elevator is below the fourth floor. So in either case, maybe the passenger will have to jump onto the fourth floor, or maybe he will have to climb onto the fourth floor. So again, it is not convenient. right so again if the steady state error is too large it is not suitable for a control system so basically for your control system which you will be designing the transient response should neither be too fast nor it should be too slow and the steady state error should be as small as Possible. 
this is the basic requirement of designing your control system. Now, in this slide, this is the typical output or generally from a control system or a controller, we get this type of an output. <clears throat> right? So this is the response characteristic of your control system. General one. Okay. Now we'll be discussing or we'll be talking a little bit more about this in the classes uh, to come. But it is uh, beneficial to you know uh, talk about a little bit about the things or the values which you can identify from this graph. So in this graph, you have the rise sign, right? So basically uh, what will happen is your controller or the response or the output of your controller start rising. And then you may have some overshoot. Yes, you may cross your desired value. So in this uh, uh, one is your desired value. And so at, in some cases, you may cross this desired value or there may be a little bit of overshoot. And then you may have some oscillation before your output settles around the desired value. Okay. So the rise time is the time taken by your controller to produce the output starting from zero to the desired value. And so your output, it will start rising from zero up to the desired value. That is your rise time. And similarly, you have the peak time. So peak time is the time taken by your controller to produce the maximum output. And so this is the peak here. So we have the peak time. Now, settling time. Settling time is the time after which the output or the response of your controller does not cross this desired range. Now, very often, uh, while designing a controller, we cannot get an exact output, right? If we want one, we, normally we won't get one. We will get either 0 0.9 or 1 point, uh, maybe 5, right? around that desired value. So we generally uh, define a range, an acceptable range. So if my output is within this range, um, I am satisfied, right? So here in this uh, figure, the blue line over here, it is your range, right? Around the desired uh, value. So if we look at this point over here, or the settling time. So after this settling time, you can see the output of the controller is not going beyond this range. It stays within the range, right? So that's your uh, settling time. And obviously you will have some steady state error, some difference between your desired output and your dis uh, actual output. So steady state error is basically this uh, difference between your desired output and the actual output. We will talk a little bit more in the next few classes. Uh, okay, so now Let's talk a little bit about the advantages of a control system. So obviously, uh, there are several advantages of a control system. Um, for example, 
you have power amplification. So control systems, they can provide power amplification. And one example for this uh, is your forklift, right? So forklift, we all might have seen it. Uh, so they are used to lift heavy objects, right? So just by pulling down a lever, uh, you can lift heavy objects. So it is amplifying the power. Okay. Now, similarly, uh, the second advantage is remote control. Something like your robots, right? Um, maybe you can control them from a distance, right? Or you can remote control them to perform some hazardous operations, right? Maybe like diffusing a bomb or in hazardous environment where humans cannot go. So in such cases, we can use a robot which uses a control system. Now, the third advantage over here is convenience of input or output form. Now, one very good example is your digital thermometer. So, uh, what your digital thermometer does is it measures the temperature. And now, temperature is a physical quantity, right? So, you have your physical quantity which you are measuring and the output which you are getting is a number. Uh, exact value 37 degrees centigrade or uh, 47 degrees centigrade so those numbers it's quite convenient and so you will have a controller within your digital thermometer which converts the uh, the output from thermocouple which is in voltage and then convert it into a number right so you have a controller to convert the input in one form to an output in your desired form number, or maybe something else now the fourth advantage of a control system is to uh, compensate for disturbances now the example i've i'm, I'm using here is uh, maybe uh, you are uh, rotating up antenna Right? Maybe to improve the reception, you are rotating this antenna. Right? So, uh, and maybe it is windy outside. So, if the wind is also blowing and in the opposite direction, and you are trying to rotate this antenna in this direction, what will happen? The wind will resist the movement of the antenna or the rotation of the antenna. So therefore, if we want to uh, rotate the antenna by, let's say, 30 degree or something, uh, by the end of it, because of the wind, uh, your antenna will not be rotated by that angle. So you will have some error. Now, if we have a control system there uh, for to perform this operation, your control system, they can compensate for the error, right? So we will we'll discuss a little bit more how it compensates for the error. It will be more clear in the next few slides, right? But there is a, a closed loop system which we use to compensate for the error. And so we can use uh, a control system for compensating the disturbances. Now, control system in general, overall, they can be classified into two forms. The first is your regulator. So regulator, as the uh, name suggests, it regulates something. So if you are regulating temperature or maybe humidity or something, right? Uh, that uh, uh, using a control system, so that will be classified as your regulator. So one example over here is uh, if you, you normally we use uh, this digital thermometer to control the 
temperature of a room. Right? So your thermometer, it will be connected to a heating system or a cooling system or your air conditioners right? to regulate the temperature or to maintain the temperature of a room around a fixed temperature. So such type of controller, they can be classified as a regulator. Now the second classification of controller is servo mechanism. Right? So servo mechanism, they are uh, such type of controller which will track or which will follow a physical quantity or variable with which changes with time. Now one example of this servo uh, mechanism is your drone. Right? So nowadays we have so many advanced type of drones and uh, maybe you might have either done it yourself or you might have seen some videos some drone uh, shots right so like if the person is moving and the drone is also moving along with the same person right or maybe they are driving and they are capturing that video using drone right so in such uh, uh, instances or in such uh, application the controller they are said to be classified as self mechanism and maybe in defense applications right where uh, the missile it follows or it tracks the heat signature of the aircraft right uh, so uh, you launch a, a missile and uh, it captures or it follows the heat signature of the aircraft right it tracks that so what the controller it does it automatically adjust uh, according to the variables such as your wind speed, maybe the temperature, like that. And it will follow that object or that aircraft. Right? So such type of application we are classified as servo mechanism. Now uh, types of control system. So generally, we have two types of control systems. We have something called as the open loop system. And the second one is your closed loop system. Now, essentially, both these types of control systems, they have quite similar block diagram. So the block diagram of your open loop system is given in your slides. So you have your input or your reference which you apply, right? And then um, you have your input transducer, which could be either a sensor or a keypad where you enter the uh, input or the reference signal. So input transducer, it could be either a sensor or maybe a keypad where you enter this input. And depending on the input and the desired output, your controller will generate a control signal. Right. But uh, at times due to the, uh, you know, some errors in the internal circuitry or some disturbances within the internal circuitry of the controller or your input transducer, you may have some disturbances. So those are added at the first summing junction. Right. And then it is sent to your process or plant. So based on the uh, control signal, this process or plant, it will produce an 
output. But again, due to the external disturbances, so external disturbances may be like wind speed, right, or temperature, something. Because of the external factors, you may have some additional disturbances which are added at your second summing junction. Right. So disturbance one, it was because of internal, internal circuitry or internal disturbances, which happens within your control system. External is because of the other surrounding factors, temperature, humidity, or something. Right. So that is added at the second jump, summing junction. And obviously you will get a output, right? So you could say that as output or your actual output. Now, looking at this open loop system with so many disturbances, we can say that the actual output, it won't be the same as our desired output. Uh, so basically your open loop system, they cannot compensate for any disturbances. As we have just discussed, it cannot compensate these disturbances, right? Uh, although your actual output will not be exactly equal to the desired output, but it may fall in a range, in an acceptable range of value. So open loop system, they are used and you have some applications of open loop system. So for example, your traffic signal, right? Where even if uh, due to these disturbances, maybe uh, if the red light is on for another few seconds, Right, it is not a big problem. Or maybe in your toaster, which you use to toast the bread. Right. Um, again, if uh, one bread it get burned, right, uh, it's it's okay. We can use another bread. Right. So such type of applications we can use uh, open loop system, where disturbances or if even if the output is slightly different it is okay to use the system now the second type of control system is your closed loop system so this figure is kind of like a shorter version of the block diagram but I have put it here just to emphasize or just to highlight that in your closed loop system, you will have all the blocks that we have seen for open loop. Along with them, just the additional thing, you will have your feedback. So a closed loop system will have a feedback which um, connects your output and feed it back to your input. Now, this is the complete block diagram of a closed loop system. So your closed loop system, uh, as you can see, it has all the blocks that we have seen for open loop. You have the input transducer, then you have the controller, process and plant, along with the disturbances. We have all the blocks, uh, the open loop system. Now, along with those blocks, the additional thing which we can see here is this feedback loop. Right. Now, this output transducer, which in general is a sensor, right? So your output transducer in general, it is a 
sensor which will measure the output right and send it back to your input now this output signal or the output of your controller is then subtracted from your input right and it produces an error so you have provided a input that you maybe want to go up to the fourth floor right so four is your input and uh, if you have a feedback mechanism or you have a closed loop system um, maybe the elevator it will have some kind of sensor which will measure the level at which it is whether it is at second floor or third floor and it will continuously feed it back to your uh, to this summing junction and what this summing junction will do is it will compare your output your current output and your input and generate a error signal okay. so based on this error signal the controller it will <clears throat> kind of uh, generate a, a signal to adjust the output right so this controller will then adjust the output according to the error signal. So closed loop system, as we can see, it can compensate for disturbances. And compensate for disturbances by measuring the output, comparing it to the desired output, and driving the difference towards zero. So, if we have a control, a, a closed loop control system, uh, we can uh, almost achieve the desired value. Okay. So, that is the main difference between your closed loop and open loop system. One, that is, it has a feedback loop, and second, it can compensate for the disturbances. Now, obviously we have discussed this, right now we have discussed uh, about this. So, mainly what are the advantages and disadvantages of a closed loop and open loop system? So, an open loop system, they are easier to design. Right? They can be designed very easily. But as we have discussed, we cannot compensate for disturbances or errors. Right? So, the advantage of a closed loop system is that they are easier to design. But the disadvantage uh, is that it cannot compensate. Errors. Similarly, uh, the open loop system, they are uh, difficult, but they are slightly complex to design. And at times you need to calibrate your control system. So, you're, sorry, I've, I've written it uh, the other way around. Let's change this one. This is for open loop. These are the advantage and disadvantage of an open loop, and this is the advantage and disadvantage of a closed loop. Okay. So a closed loop system, they are slightly complex to design, and at times we will need to calibrate our control system. 
and the advantage for closed loop system is that it can compensate or any error or any disturbance okay so we have just now discussed about this and this was just to summarize uh, the things Now, as we have been discussing in this class that uh, our main objective will be to design or to learn how to design a controller. So for designing a control system, there are several stages which we follow. So I've mentioned the stages over here. Right. You have five different stages for designing a control system. So in the first stage or in the first step, what we do is we determine the physical system and specifications. So what do we mean by that? So we try and identify all the physical uh, elements or physical uh, things which we need. For example, you may need a motor for your control system or you may need several resistances capacitance and so we need different physical components for for implementing your control system so we identify or determine those physical uh, elements which we are going to use right? and along with them we also uh, uh, identify or determine their specification Right. So, for example, if you are using a resistor, what should be the value of that resistor? Or if you are using a capacitor, what should be the value or specification of that capacitor? Or what should be the specification of your motor? Right. So, all those things we determine at the first step. Now, in the second step, we transform physical system into schematic. Right? That is how we are going to connect all those physical components, how we are going to connect the motor or how we are going to connect the resistors or design a circuit. Right? And generally, in a control system, you will have so many different subsystems, different parts which are doing or performing different, different tasks. Right? So maybe if you are designing a controller for drone right so you may have uh, a separate subsystem for controlling the speed of the motors right uh, you may have a subsystem which measures the elevation or uh, how, what is the distance from ground right you may have a subsystem to measure or to change the angle of the blades or the turbine which you are using right so you may have several subsystems. So how we are going to connect all of them? That we do in the second stage. Now in the third stage, we develop a plot diagram. Now we will be talking uh, or one lecture will be dedicated on, on this plot diagrams and all. So generally, uh, we before physically implementing a circuit we normally try and test that circuit using some kind of simulation software right uh, so same thing we do in control system now in the next class we'll be talking a little bit more about uh, the block diagram and uh, all those things so basically for all the subsystems which we have in our control system we kind of try to develop a mathematical equation which is called as your transfer function so in the block diagram or in in the stage three so we already have the physical schematic right how we are going to connect different systems so now we replace the those uh, those um, uh, those blocks by a transfer function or a mathematical equation 
right? So that is how we um, convert it into a block diagram. So block diagram along with their mathematical equation or transfer function and see the connection. Now, the fourth step is to reduce the block diagram, right? Uh, so we will discuss about a few techniques, how to reduce the block diagram, right? Um, and then the final stage is to analyze the design and test your system. So after we have reduced the block diagram, we implement it on MATLAB or any other simulation software, test our system, whether it is working properly or not. And then we implement that uh, control system physically. Okay. So these are the five stages of designing a control system. Now, in the last stage, that is your stage five, we were talking about, uh, we will analyze uh, the, the control system. So how we can analyze or test our control system, whether it is working properly or not. Now for that, uh, we use different type of test inputs, right? So we try and test our control system uh, to see how will my control system respond if there is a sudden rise in the input voltage, right? That is your impulse. If my input all of a sudden it shoots up, what will, uh, how will my control system respond? So that thing we test using the impulse signal. Then we also test how will my control system, it will respond if the input is stable, right? Such as your step response. Then how will my control system respond if the input is gradually increasing, right? It is increasing. So you have your ramp response or it is your input is, you know, uh, it, it's changing exponentially or your input is continuously changing, something like a sinusoidal input, right? So we apply all these uh, inputs, test input, to check the response of our control system. Now, normally this uh, particular module we will be using mostly, I think, impulse, step, and ramp input signal to test our system. And maybe uh, we may also use parabola. So, um, yeah, so these three or these four test signal we will be using uh, in our classes. Now, the next or the last thing in this first lesson that uh, we would like to discuss is uh, a little bit about the output. So generally, the output of your control system, it will consist of natural response and forced response, right? So the total output response of your control system, it will be sum of the natural response and the forced response. Now, what is your natural response? So the natural response is not because of the applied input. Okay. Rather, it depends on the initial condition of the system. And also, it depends on how the components in a system, they either gain or dissipate energy. Now, for example, uh, 
uh, you have a motor in your control system. So this motor will not immediately start rotating at its maximum speed as soon as you apply the input voltage, right? It will take some time. It will start slowly and gradually build up speed and start rotating at its maximum speed, but that will take some time, right? Or you may have a capacitor in your circuit, right? So as we know that if the capacitor is charged, uh, your output, it will be different, right? If your capacitor is charged, before you start using the circuit, you will still get some output because there will be some charge within that capacitor, right? So such type of uh, uh, responses, which are not because of the input signal, those are your, those are your natural response, right? Which is basically because of the circuit or um, maybe some charge which the circuit has, or maybe because of the component, they are taking some time to absorb the energy and start rotating at the maximum speed, right? So you're in, uh, so those are your natural responses. Now, so this was about natural response. The forced response, right? So since you are forcing a response, so this forced response is because of your input, right? Um, so what happens is that if you have a control system, which have some components in it, for the initial few seconds, the output will be because of the natural response right and not because of your input your output of your control system for the first few seconds or for the initial period it will be because of the natural response and then if you continue to operate your control system for a, some period of time uh, the natural response will become zero and then the output or your total response will be only because of your input that is your forced response so during the initial uh, phase the output will be because of natural response after some time it will be because of your input that is your forced response so while designing a control system uh, we should be aware about this fact that our control system may not immediately start responding according to the input which we are applying. Right? It may take some time to respond according to the input. So while designing a control system, we should be vigilant or we should be careful about this. 